All right, welcome to Dark Alley Productions Podcast, or Dark Alley Podcast. We're still contemplating what the official name will be. This is our, uh, our first podcast, episode one. For episode one, we thought we'd talk about Mad Max. Woo! The game came out a couple weeks ago, the same time Fury Road came out. Yeah. So with me today, I got my good friend and uh, colleague of Dark Alley Productions, Mr. Ryan Campbell. Hello, hello. It's good to be here. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about all things Mad Max. So starting with all things Mad Max, Ryan, i got to ask you this. All right, what do you guys ask me, buddy? How did you first find Mad Max at the first trailer that came out in Comic-Con, like 2014 or 13 or whatever? Well, <clears throat> you want my honest opinion, yeah. right? Well, to be honest, I didn't know what to think. I had never seen the Mad Max movies before, and... To be honest, I never really heard about them. Mad Max was a new thing to me. So I heard about Mad Max. I was like, what the fuck is Mad Max? Yeah, I, I had heard the name and I'd seen the image of Mel Gibson walking down the road with a shotgun, but I'd never seen the movies. Because all those like figure companies I buy from, everyone always posts pictures. They're like, make Mel Gibson's Mad Max. <laughs> and they post a picture and I'm like, what the fuck is Mad Max? Yeah. He doesn't look quite, He doesn't look that mad. I know. Aside from his like ripped sleeve and the dog, but... <laughs> And then, yeah, I remember seeing the Comic-Con trailer. I didn't... I watched it months after because it didn't really appeal to me. Then it's like, it has like 4 million views. I was like, what the fuck? Is this actually like a popular thing? And I watched the trailer and I was like, this is weird. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I, I don't know what to think. I don't know who's in this movie or what's going on. <laughs> oh, look, it's Tom Hardy. <laughs> like I was like, it was fucked. The trailer, like... Oh, you know what I thought about the trailer when I actually watched it? I was like... <clears throat> You know, it looks like there's some really wicked action in it, but what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And then closer to release, you started seeing the trailers and the theater and all that, and it was like, <laughs> same thing every time. I was like, <laughs> what is fucking happening here? Like, <laughs> There's there's car chases, I, there's I, weird looking fuckers. I know, I didn't know the world of Mad Max. You got these fucking white painted guys and yeah. these cars with like poles and sticking out of them in the desert and shit, and it's like... You know, what the fuck is this? Like, and the people looked fucked, and it was like, what? The yeah. Hell? So then, when when we actually saw Fury Road, and that was our very first Mad Max. Yeah, movie. we none of us had seen Mad Max until Fury Road. So you know, apologies, apologies to the old fans, but we, we saw the newest one. Everyone sorry. gets so mad, eh? When you when you get introduced to a franchise to the newest thing. Oh, yeah. And I can't really say shit, because I remember people saw Prometheus, and then oh, they didn't know about the Alien movies <laughs> until like, Prometheus, and I was like, you fucking assholes, like, how do you not know about the Alien movies? Like, you dumbos. <laughs> <laughs> or same with Predators, and Predators came out, I was like, there's other Predator movies? Holy fuck. Don't you people know your culture? Oh, there was, um, <laughs> there was a kid in our class who did that, it was, uh... Rambo, <laughs> uh, with the, our teacher showed brief footage of First Blood, and he's like, which Rambo movie was that? And it was like, the first one. He thought, like, Rambo, like Rambo 4, was Rambo. What? That was it. That was the only Rambo. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm not going to say his name, but you know who that is. Oh, I, I, can, I can definitely guess. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> He thought that was Rambo. Like, there was no other Rambo movies. We saw this young Sylvester Stallone in the woods, and he was like, what the fuck is this? <clears throat> wow, that's kind of sad. Yeah. But yeah, so the process of us seeing Fury Road, though, was, um, I think, no, you and I, I was the only one who was sure on it, and I asked you if you wanted to come. And my my feelings on it were mixed. I was like, it looks like wicked action, but I just I don't know what to think about it because it looks like such a different and weird movie. Yeah, but I was like, I'll see it. You know what? It looks Fuck like, it. There's some wicked action. It looks like I'll see it. Well, you know what kind of sold me is the reviews, man. Do you remember when this thing came oh, out? Okay. Rotten Tomatoes it was like a ninety five percent. Yeah, you mentioned the good reviews. So and I then it out before I was it. like, all right. I watched Jeremy John's review, and he said it was awesome. I was like. All right, I think I'll check this out because I normally agree with Rotten Tomatoes. Normally, yeah. normal. Um, sometimes I don't agree with Jeremy Johns. Like his yeah, his uh, Fury review, I didn't agree with at all. No, that was. But uh, he, he, I think he had some points wrong there. Or according to you, Black Mass. Oh, that's a wicked movie. He uh, he didn't shit on it, but he didn't really. 
no raise story, it. No story, my ass. There's a story. Um, but yeah, after all that, I was like, all right, I gotta check out this fucking Mad Max movie because everyone's saying how awesome it is. And then I saw even on Facebook, people I knew, other movie fanatics like me, were like, "Man, Mad Max Fury Road, best action movie ever." Yeah. Best action movie in decades. Everyone was saying that. I was like, all right, I gotta fucking see this shit. I gotta see if this is worthy. So you and I decided to see it. And our other friend tagged along. And girlfriends and all that shit tagged along. We get in the theater. Fucking packed. It's already been out for two weeks. And the theater's still fucking packed. On oh, a right. Sunday night, too. Yeah, Sunday night, guys. Sunday night. And it was fucking packed. Get in there, watch the first few trailers. And we're like, all right. And, you know, like, first... First, like, you know, honestly, the first, like, five minutes hooked me. First, yeah. The first five minutes hooked me. Well, the way it opens is so intense. You got, it's just a black screen. I don't know why I love movies that start with black screens with just basics, opening titles, and background noise. And it's like, you hear, like, the guy in the back, he's like, it's gasoline, stupid. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, it's gasoline, Some kind of stupid. narration about how the world ended and shit. And then you hear that voice. Uh, the voice, like... The voice that is Tom Hardy. Yeah, and he's like, my name is Max. And it's like, oh, okay. All right, this is kind of a rough movie, eh? Yeah. He's like, later in the narration, he's like, I'm the one who runs from the living and the dead. And oh, like, that's that just oh. was like, wow. The opening lines were the best. And that opening shot, just after you get the Mad Max Fury Road, and Tom Hardy has Max, I can't even fucking say his last name. Like Rabinaski or Rabid Rakadaska, the fuck. <laughs> Rakadu, what the fuck? Some Jewish name. <laughs> oh, watch it there, buddy. Watch uh, it. <laughs> nah, nah. Um, and then Charlize Theron is Furiosa, and it was like, all right, okay. I didn't even know she was in it actually until the opening credits. Uh, yeah, I kind of knew. I was like, hmm, that act, that name sounds familiar, but I didn't click in until I saw it. Like, oh, okay. And then. Um, the opening just, you get the car, oh. you get Max standing there, and this lizard walks up, this fucking weird-ass two-headed lizard. Dude, that lizard clearly has some radiation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he crawls up to Mad Max, and he just, boom, stomps on it. And, you know, nonchalant, just kicks it up, eats it. That's when I knew this movie was, all right, this is going to be some heavy metal shit. Like, oh, yeah. But the m- moment I was hooked, that I was hooked on the actual film where I'm like, this is going to be good was when they, they chain him up and he gets away and that quick chase and he's running all the yes. fucking war boys are after him and he's throwing them off the edge. That chase was just so on the edge of your seat just do 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 Edge of your seat just fast, very fast. Like he's hitting guys left and right. He's jumping on the he's wall. booking he's, it. He's running down the hall. And you know what the filming technique they use like, always works best in chase scenes and even Quentin Tarantino said it for car chases is you move the camera with them, which he did. He was either following Max or Max was running at the camera. Because I noticed in a chase of any kind, car chase or on foot chase, if you have the camera still and you just see it happen, it's not as intense. No. And that's what he did, is the whole time the camera is chasing fucking Tom Hardy. <laughs> I love that one shot where he comes in and he sees his interceptor being worked on and he slides across it. Oh, yeah. And the camera stops and you see all these war boys <laughs> fucking <laughs> leaping <laughs> across it. <laughs> That was sick. That was really sick. But after that, and then it goes black, and it's like Mad Max. You get that music, that oh. bomb, bomb. Well, you know, like another thing that hooked me about the movie, thinking about it now, it's like when you first see Immortan Joe, and he gives this speech. Yeah, he comes up with the on top of the Citadel. And just seeing the little things, like you see the War Boys, they're going War Boys and War chanting. Boys, War Boys. And oh, what do, what do they do with their hands? They, like, cross their hands or something? Yeah. They, for like, Morton Joe? Yeah, like... Yeah, like, bah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's what had me hooked, though. That opening little bit, I thought... Maybe not hooked, but that's where I thought, okay, this is going to be a pretty intense movie. The next 30 minutes, I'd say, of the movie is a car chase. Literally the next at least 30 minutes, because then you fucking... You get the whole... They introduce Furiosa, and she's transporting the war rig, and she goes off. Yeah. And then Morton Joe and all his brides are missing. 
You know, more than Joe's pretty pissed about that. Yeah. I wonder what ever happened to that old lady. Like, you never actually remember. She's like, uh, he's like, where are they? And fucking. You, know, you see, I think you see her a couple other times in the movie, but you never see if she dies. I don't know. He just grabs her by the throat and it cuts to uh, no, I think like, Tom Hardy. I think later in the movie, like, when you, you remember when his son is born and the son's dead? Yeah. I think that she was there. I think maybe, maybe. the old lady was there. But I think that's the only other time, like, you see Yeah, her. she might have been, actually. I'm not sure. They never show her die. No. I don't know. I just remember, I remember Morton grabbing her, and she had the big double barrel. But, uh, anyway, so they go off in their big chase, and then they use Tom Hardy as the blood bag. How was, they had some cool shots there. Oh, where, my God. Like, they, t- they had the camera stuck on Tom Hardy while the car was driving. That was oh, sick. Yeah. But that chase, where you get... First, the buzzards chase the war rig. All right. And then in the middle of that, the war party, a Morton Joe's war party shows up, fights off the buzzards. And then it's like, okay, that's pretty intense too. And then but the then, big so, storm comes in. Well, before that, the war party realizes after the war rig. So then you get that big chase. Then the big storm kills a fuck oh, ton of them. That's a that's cuts well, to black. Oh, that is such a wicked scene, by the way. That storm, so well yeah. done. Yeah, what a day! What a lovely day! In the music too, like the, the other thing I have to say, Mad Max does really well, and it really see, synchronizes well with the scenes is the soundtrack. Yeah, you, you hear the soundtrack for the storm where they see the guys flying up, and there's like the, the lightning. Do for you. Uh, the One do. of my favorite shots is when. A Morton Joe's war party first rolls out, and you get this big, like, crane shot panning through the whole thing. And it goes up back of this truck, and you got these drummers just boom, 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 boom. Uh, and it's just, it's, and it, go, it pans around the truck, and the front of the truck is a sound stage. You got this heavy metal guy in a red jumpsuit with a flamethrower guitar. Flamethrower guitar. Not just, not just a good guitar, but a flamethrower. Flamethrower on his guitar. Yeah. And he's just rocking out in the middle of a car chase. And, it is so, I was sold. <laughs> it was yeah, like, it's like, it's so out there, but so fucking wicked. You know what? I thought that too, actually. I listened to George Miller explain that. And it's actually not as far-fetched as you think. No, like the reasoning makes sense. Yeah. And but I think that's why you can buy it in Mad Max, because... I don't know, do you want to explain the reasoning? Okay. So I watched George Miller kind of explain it. Basically what he said is like, back in the day... Uh, in war, they had, like, the drummer. He was, um... I don't know what you call it. He, They call it a war crier in Mad Max. I don't know if they actually call it. Uh, kind of the... Yeah, kind of the same thing. But basically, yeah, he played the instrument, and you know, all right, motherfuckers are coming. Yeah. So he's like, okay, let's, this is war in the Mad Max world, though. It's not gonna be a drummer. It's gonna be a fucking electric guitar that shoots flames. <laughs> Because why not? So that's basically, he, it, it, this what kind of made sense in that way. I was like, that's... Yeah. But you can buy it from Mad Max because of the world that is Mad Max. Yeah, speaking of the world of Mad Max, that's one of the best things of Mad Max. Oh. Is the universe... Yeah. The... You know, it's such a realized world for a wasteland. Because mm-hmm. that's what, you know, if you look at the world of Mad Max and you look at the setting of, of most of the movie, it's just desert. Yeah. There's a lot of desert, but, but everything they, pop, about they it, populate like... it with interesting people and factions. I, yeah, I love that's what I mean, like the the characters and the names and the terminology and everyone's familiar with this wasteland. It's not like how do we survive? No, like you see a lot of other wastelands. It's it, like you know, you, you realize this has happened for a while now. Yeah, you got Immortan Joe. This is the world. And the Citadel, you got Gas Town, you got Bullet Farm. Yeah, and all, all yeah, exactly. All these different factions. And they all dress different. Like I think is is it a... It's Gas Town, I think, with the big fat guy with the nipple piercings and the... And the, the suit. The suit. He had the nipples cut out of the suit and he had piercings. <laughs> and then Bullet was the... Bullet Farm was the guy who comes out the, of the top of his uh, his big-ass car with the dual-wheeled machine guns and he's screaming. Uh, and he actually had almost like armor with bullet casings like strapped all around it. Yeah, and he was like that snarky guy who uh, when the, they caved in the mountains at the fucking... The, Bikers, I can't remember what the bikers were called. Uh, I can't remember either, but they but were they, pretty wicked. They caved in the mountains, and everyone's all like, no, and fucking, he's all like, all this for fucking a little bit of gasoline, or something like that. He's oh, like, I think it was for the brides. All this or, for the brides. They're like, yeah, he's like, all this for a family squabble, I think mm-hmm. he said. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, he's fucking, and then 
he goes off to try to kill them all, and Morton Joe's like, don't you shoot my brides, and he fucking starts shooting at the bride. <laughs> you know, like, that guy doesn't give two fucks, he just wants no. to end it. No, but, that, going back to the, the Doof Warrior, though, that's where I was sold, was the Doof Warrior. Yeah. He just, that, it just adds such a flair and a style to your movie that no other apocalyptic movie has, and it's... Oh, yeah. You know, like, it's like you said with most movies of that type, it's how do we survive, or this just happened, yeah. this happened four, six months ago. Yeah, and everyone's, like, scavenging, and re- it's more realistic, where Mad Max is not really realistic. Everyone's, like, religiously in love with cars and fucking... Yeah. The war boys are all painted right, and they're like, Valhalla, like... But then again, at the same time, you know, it's it's obsession with gasoline. Gasoline, yeah. I mean... Yeah, not food, not water, just gasoline. gasoline, or as they call it, guzzoline. But then again, like you look at gasoline in our society, it does so much. Imagine it's if we were, imagine if we were to lose it. You know what I I wonder about Mad Max that none of the movies explain, as far as I know. So don't get mad at me if fucking I'm wrong. Uh, how the apocalypse happened? You know, I don't know either. Because Mad Max, like the original Mad Max. Which we have both seen. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. <laughs> right after Fury Road, we were both like, that was awesome. Like, we both fucking loved Fury Road, so we both went out. We bought the Blu-rays for Mad Max, The Road Warrior, and Beyond Thunderdome. Which you haven't seen, The Road Warrior, yet. No, I still need to watch that movie. Road Warrior kicks ass. Thunderdome sucks, but <laughs> Road Warrior I, kicks ass. Yeah, I hear Thunderdome is still a good movie, it's just not the best Mad Max Well, you, it's not Mad Max is the problem. It's too... There's, like, a car chase in the end of it. It's, like, maybe five, ten minutes long. Yeah. Like, a two-hour movie, and then nothing else really happens. Yeah, I suppose that. It just wasn't very Mad Max. Road Warrior is badass. Road Warrior didn't have a lot of car chases, but it had a lot of elements that Fury Road had. But, anyway, in the original Mad Max, it's not apocalyptic. It's, uh, it, it's, it's kind of like a destroyed world where crime runs everything. Yeah. But it's not the apocalypse. There's still no. buildings. There's still functioning businesses. There's grass. You know, everything's not a desert. The police force is really weird. It was like a... They all wore leather jackets and had yellow cars and fucking... And, um... More like a vigilante group than an actual police yeah. force. Yeah. But it was an actual police force. He was a cop. Yeah. They say, like, he's... I used to be a cop. And yeah. it was like... That's kind of a weird thing. It, I always, like, I remember watching the original movies, like, this is... Okay, these guys are the cops, but they act like vigilantes. Yeah. But I suppose with the way the world is, you can kind of buy it. Yeah. But then, yeah, I didn't like the original Mad Max, like Mad Max, as much as Fury Road. No, it was, well, you know, like... It just wasn't we, the we same. Kind of, we, we spoiled ourselves because we went to Fury Road, and now it's a, a big budget, epic action movie. The original Mad Max didn't have much of a budget. It was an indie movie, right? Yeah, he was like a guy like... George Miller was kind of like us in the sense he's made an indie film. You know what a fun fact about that is? When he made Road Warrior, the reason it's called Road Warrior is uh, he got that one made in the States. And uh, Mad Max, the original, was so unpopular in the States, they would they said they can't release it if you call it Mad Max 2 because nobody will buy it. Oh. So they called it the Road Warrior, and then it did really well in the States, and later he came out and he's like, yeah, it's a sequel to my other movie, Mad Max. <laughs> They're like, what? Yeah, and then Mad Max got popular, and then fucking Thunderdome came out. And that uh, kind of... But the thing about Mad Max compared to Fury Road was... Um, the world just seems so different. It was, it's more normal. Yeah. It's more like our world. Than it was different. less... It was cool, but it was less, like... Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... Well, and, you know, like, one thing that disappointed me about that movie but i i do realize that you know as you said it was more of an indie movie so it's not like he could do a whole lot yeah and it was also like the 70s so yeah like. what would have been cool though had you really seen that transaction from this world going to shit to the desert to the mad max we wasteland. now know yeah the wasteland which i think evidently is uh the name of the next mad max is the wasteland and I guess, it, is it going to focus on Furiosa? I don't know if it's focusing on her, but I do know, according to uh, IMDb, it's, uh, she's signed on as Furiosa again. Because I thought I remember seeing an interview where George Miller was saying, like, I really want to use Furiosa. Like, I really want I her hope, in the next I movie. hope he uses her again, but I actually, 
I think Fury Road was her story. I think Wasteland should be Max's story and Furiosa is a side character and yeah. switch it from Fury Road. So that's how Fury Road was, is basically Max was a side character tagging along in some other fucking adventure he had nothing to do with. Yeah. That's the thing. It's, it was a wicked movie, but it was Furiosa's story. Yeah, and that's, I think fucking Wasteland should be the opposite. But definitely <clears throat> have her in there somehow, because she, yeah. she was a wicked character. Yeah. You know what's really funny, actually? I didn't notice she had a robotic arm until, like, the last third. You didn't notice that? No, because I was so caught up in everything else that was happening, and then... She's walking along after she realizes the green place is gone, and she takes her arm off. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's what I noticed when she took it off. I was like, Jesus Christ, she doesn't have a fucking arm. I was like, because everything else is so intense. I've just been watching the action, and I was like, God damn. Uh, I noticed that right away. I'm just mm. like, oh, well, that sucks. That took me a little bit to notice. It took me a little bit. You know what's funny about Mad Max? The director of Mad Max, Fury Road, is the same director of the old ones. You know what else he made? Happy Feet. Happy Feet. He made Happy Feet and Babe, Pig in New York. <laughs> like, <laughs> How does the guy go from making those movies to Mad to Max? To Mad Max. Like, <laughs> but you know what the funniest thing is? If Have you seen Happy Feet? No, but I heard it was great. For an animated movie, it was fantastic. But there's this one scene where the whales, killer whales, attack the, do- or the, the penguins. And you can you can see the Mad Maxness in it, like the cameras. He's fucking throwing the camera around, and the action for an animated movie about whales attacking penguins. <laughs> the action was so well done. Like that scene was so fucking intense and well choreographed. Like, fuck, man, George Miller can do fucking action. Oh yeah. Well, it seems like the guy can do anything. He can make a children's movie. He can make a yeah. You know. R-rated action movie. It's like, holy shit. Like, I think that was one of the coolest things about um, Mad Max. Everything that was happening was affecting something else in the action. So, like, Fear of you, somebody been dealing with a car on the side. She's trying to ram that car. So that's happening. Meanwhile, um, Max is on top of the war rig fighting someone. But every time she turns, he it fucks with what he's doing. Meanwhile... Uh, I can never remember his name. The war boy who... Oh, yeah. The, he was cool. Like, he was really cool. I just can't remember his name because I only say it like once. Yeah. He's, but think, he's the good war boy. Yeah, he might be on the front doing something and that's affecting him. Or, well, yeah, there's like the one scene where the car is trying to ram them. They're trying to get past the car so they have to... They're pouring oil in. Yeah, they're spitting oil into the engine. Yeah. And the, you know, it shows how crazy the war boys are because... You see Max, he's spitting oil to the engine. Excuse me. And um, then it shows the other war boy doing it on his interceptor. Did you notice that? Oh, yeah. I didn't notice that until I got it on DVD. Because Max comes out in his Batman voice. He's like, that's mine. And that's his interceptor. And I never realized that was his interceptor. I didn't yeah. know what he was talking about. Yeah, I remember the point. is like, oh, That shit. actually kind of broke my heart. When I, re- I finally realized I was the interceptor and they blow it up. I was like, oh, Poor Max. That means it's not coming back. They're not bringing the Interceptor back again. <laughs> oh, no. But uh, you see the war boy who's in it from the beginning hanging up the side, and he's pouring the uh, the gasoline into the engine, but then he's drinking some. Then he's pouring it into the engine, <laughs> and then he drinks some. He's like, just shows how crazy these war boys are. They're fucking insane. Oh, yeah. It was like, you look at a lot of them, they have, like defects on them like you know they're murders. all very ill like yeah extremely ill well because yeah the good war boys doing the war rig right and he's coughing and shit so max would have come out and be like all right you fuck go back in there and i'll do this because you're gonna die <laughs> like, yeah. you're gonna have a heart attack or something um but yeah one of the biggest debates i think um every generation gets their own movie for a franchise like Fury Road is like our generation's Mad Max. Um, the Dark Knight yeah. trilogy is like our generation's Batman. Batman. And so many people get mad about that when you're like, Christian Bale's my Batman. People are like, fuck you, Michael Keaton's my Batman. It's <laughs> like, no. No. <laughs> like, no, it's just... Dumb. I get it. When you were young, that's when Batman was the big thing, was Michael Keaton. No, now it's, it's Christian Bale. Oh, yeah. But that may change. We may get Ben Affleck. And now we get Ben Affleck, ben Affleck which I'm kind of excited to yeah. see. He looks 
Fucking sick. Ben Affleck could be the, that new Batman to us. And then now we got Tom Hardy is our Mad Max. Not to discredit Mel Gibson, he was, um, he was a cool Mad Max, but he's a very different Mad Max. And yeah, now there's get... been such a time distance between the last few movies. Yeah, and now, I think it was Honest Trailer said um, Mel Gibson got too mad to play Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, yeah, we went, they went with Tom Hardy, and he was a good Mad Max. Oh, he was a really good Mad Max. I mean, he spent most of the movie just grunting, but... True, but just like you said, he was he's more of a side character in that movie. Well, I, I think by this point in Max's story, he's broken. He doesn't have empathy, sympathy. And he even says, I think, in the opening credits, he's like, yeah, I don't know who's more crazy. Me or everybody else. And it's like, yeah. good point. That's kind of the other thing that was interesting when you see the original Matt Max is because that's a very different Max to the Max in Theory Road. You know, something didn't add up, and someone, a lot of people pointed out, and George Miller's like, yeah, fucking who cares? <laughs> like, is uh, you see his family get murdered in the, um, the Mad Max, the original Mad Max. They, uh, his wife and baby get run over by the biker gang. Yeah. So he keeps having flashbacks to that in Fury Road. But in Fury Road, it's like a four-year-old girl. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of like, well, all right, whatever. Like, I get it. Then people bring it up and they're like, fuck it. It's like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Like, you get the message. Mm -hmm. It means the same thing. Shut up. <laughs> like, yeah. And plus, this is what she could have looked like if she not... Not died, yeah, I guess. They don't show his wife at all. Like they never show he never has flashbacks about his wife. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Unless there's something from Thunderdome, maybe we're missing, like a kid dies in Thunderdome. Then maybe. That's something they really uh played well into the game, actually. Um so we've been talking about Fury Road the whole time, but the game, the Mad Max game just came out. I played it. I've seen some gameplay, it's not something I've really played myself yet though. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's like it looks pretty fucking awesome. It's it, especially if you're a fan of Mad Max. It's fucking awesome. It's like an open world wasteland. You get. I really wish the Citadel was there, but it's not connected to the movie, so you don't get a Morton Joe and all that. Which, although you get his son apparently. Yeah, his son that he disowned or something. I guess is how it works. His Scrotus is your enemy, and he's like a disowned son. Oh, and Morton Joe actually disowned him. Yeah. Well, he must have been a shitty son then. Yeah, because he had three sons. He had the fucking weird little baby thing in the beginning of Fury Road. Oh, yeah. Then he had Rec Erectus, which was the crazy dude, the dumbass in fucking uh, Fury Road. The really stupid one. He was like, let me see, let me see. He's like, go see if dad's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, little brother. Like, he was just stupid. And then a really tough guy with stupid. Scrotus wasn't stupid. He was just fucking nuts. Like, he was insane. Just killer. Wanted everything. Wanted every car. Would kill everybody. And, um... Yeah, they, they really played that well in the game. But I really, really wish the Citadel and was in the game. They have Gas Town in the game. Which, that's pretty wicked. That was sick. Because you don't actually see Gas Town in the movie. You just see it from a distance. Yeah. So actually go to Gas Town. And the the environment of the game is so well done where everything in Gas Town and around it, because of all the gas, is so fucking polluted. Like you actually go to Gas Town and you can see the pollution in the air. Like brutal. There's oil all over aside beside the roads and shit. And they have this area called the dump where they just throw all their scrap and you're just driving over car parts and shit. <laughs> the best thing I think the Mad Max game did was it took something from the movies, which was all you ever see was a desert. And they made it a fucking open world, which is almost the size of Grand Theft Auto, if not bigger because of all the underground places you can go. Yeah. They made an open world from a desert, and it, the world doesn't get repetitive. Which is pretty good when you think yes, about it. Yes, that's, like, that's fucking a great development skills there, yeah. like... I mean, like, I've seen some of the areas in the game, and <clears throat> it's like, yeah, it's in the desert, but there's usually diverse locations yeah, like, to it. Uh, the the southern area is called, like, the Great White, and the sand's very white, and it's rocky, and there's a lot of, um, there's less wreckage. Then you go up north little, and it looks more like Fury Road, the very orange sand, and then you go towards the dunes, and it's literally no roads. It's like, 
really soft sand and fucking there's a mountain area and there's a rocky area. There's an area with uh, uh, radioactive, radioactive waste everywhere. Like, it's really sick. Yeah. And then all the underground shit you can find. There's a whole fucking underground airport. You can drive through that. And then you get the scary buzzards. The scary buzzards, yeah. I like how they incorporated the buzzards that they only come out at night and shit. The game, now we have now we have three versions of Max now. Mel Gibson, Tom Hardy, and then who's the voice actor? Oh, fuck, I don't know. But we got the video game version of Mad Max. All three have been really good. And I said my favorite was actually, believe it or not, the video game Mad Max. When it came to characters, just because he was such a brutal fucking angry fucking dude that he was he just he took my favorite plays like there's this one character in the game i told you about he uh he sets up the gas town races oh yeah and he wears like christmas lights on his chest and he calls them lighties <laughs> and he's like a tough bald dude and he's very stern but he, he's like i need my lighties <laughs> <laughs> so like Max goes up to him, he's like, I need the gas town races, and the guy's like, no, I, you can do this chore, that chore, blah, 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 for a few years, and then I'll see if there's a spot. See, Mel Gibson's Max would have bribed him, would have thought of a way to convince him. Tom Hardy's Max, I imagine, would have either said, fuck it, and left, or like, <laughs> snuck in. This video game Max fucking puts his, like, elbow to the guy's throat and pins him to the wall, and he's like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> It was like Batman kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. So okay, well you can do it. Just give me ladies. Yeah, it was great and fucking. Um, the game was. I beat the guy. I've put sixty hours in that game. You're really into that game. I love that game. And um, yeah, man. What what else? Uh, what do you think? What do you think about uh, Fury Road? Any more thoughts on Fury Road? Uh. Not really. I mean, it's, like you said, it's one of the best action movies I've ever seen, especially the one action scene where they come across the bikers. Yeah. I don't, for me, that's honestly my favorite scene. Is it? Because I've never seen biker action done so well like that. That's true. That's true. You probably just pissed off a lot of Sons of Anarchy fans, but... Well... <laughs> no, it's, uh, sorry guys, but it, Mad Max does some really out of there wicked stuff, so I'm sorry. Uh, they're, they're jumping over the... <clears throat> the war rig and oh, shit. And you see him like jumping over. They, you know, they shoot the guy. The no. bike <laughs> almost just hits. flies by their heads. Almost hits Furiosa in the fucking face. Um, I think one of the cool things with the action in Mad Max is some of the things that happen are just, oh, what are we gonna do about this? Like one of the cool things that happened, which is something so small but so cool, was they shot the harpoon gun into the war rig, got the steering wheel, oh, and they yeah. pinned Max's arm up. Yeah. And they're trying to get it out, and they use a wrench to make a steering wheel. Yeah. They just clamp it onto the thing. And, oh, that was so sick. But that, that's the beauty of the action scenes. It's like you said, there's a lot of small stuff going on. And it's just that they do it really well. It's really cool, and you see how it affects the other people. Do you notice there's actually some humorous kind of moments in it? Like, just little, like, not like laugh out loud, but kind of things you go, ha! Yeah, I know. Like, you. I really like the, uh, well, actually, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite scenes was the fight between Furiosa and Max, where the war boy's tied to the door. That was just a beautifully choreographed fight scene. And then after, fucking, the war boy cuts Max's chain, and the war boy's all like, oh, we did it. We can ask for anything. I'm gonna ask to drive the war rig. What are you going to ask for? And fucking Max takes his coat. He's like, that's my coat. And he's like, all right, you can ask for more than a coat, though. And he fucking follows them like like they're best friends now. Max just turns around fucking uppercuts him in the stomach. <laughs> like, no big deal. But um, the other thing is he takes his boot. Remember Max loses one of his boots? Oh, yeah. So he takes the boot from the war boy. Then later in the movie, when they're stuck, he goes back and he kills people. And he comes back with, like, a bag of shit, like guns and... Uh, scrap and ammo and uh, fuck what else do you have but anyway he has all this shit and he gives it to everybody then he has a boot <laughs> he gives the boot to the war boy <laughs> that was awesome that he actually took the boot from the dead body to give to this guy that was, I thought that was funny as shit and then uh, our other friend who went didn't like the ending 
Uh, what was it that you didn't like about the other? He thing? didn't like that Max kind of goes off on his own. Oh, okay. Which I said I liked. Because that's my Max. That's who Max is. I liked it myself. I mean, again, I didn't know much about Mad Max, but he seemed like the type of character who would do that. Well, so to me, it's like that makes sense. The alternative that he preferred was Max joined Furiosa, and I was like, okay, that would kind of be a little corny, though, right? Like yeah. Max lives with Furiosa now and runs the Citadel with her, and they're in love or whatever. Oh yeah. No, like fuck that. Like he's Mad Max. He's a lone fucking road warrior. He's. Yeah. I mean, obviously, by the end of the movie, he trusts Furiosa. What does he say in the game? He has no friends, only allies at best. Yeah. And that's what Furiosa was. Um, he did something for her. She did something for him. He took off. And that's, I like that. He didn't like that, though. He thought, he, he thought that although, like, Max should have stayed. You do see the respect between the two characters, because although Max is leaving, he kind of looks up to her, like, gives her a nod. like. Yeah, but he does that in Road Warrior, too. He does that in... Thunderdome. Oh, okay. Because well, that's kind of Max's thing, right? It's like, some people describe the Mad Max movies as you're not watching a timeline. as just a legend of Mad Max. Because there's no chronological order. The films don't go in, um, in any order. Yeah. So. I yeah. that could change for the new one if they're going to be using Furiosa. Could, yeah. Because, like you said, in the past movies, you never saw any of the old characters in the new movies, right? Yeah, exactly. So, like, if they're using Furiosa in the next Mad, Mad Max movie, that's kind of changing it up a bit. That is weird. Eh? I never thought about that. They never have overlapping characters. You know They had one overlapping character for like two minutes. They <laughs> or no, actually came back in the ending. It was uh, They brought a character from uh, Road Warrior back in Thunderdome for like ten minutes. But, um, which is so fucking weird. I know a guy that looks like that character. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, you look like Mad character he he's like a pilot or whatever and there's a guy that comes in greco's by the way greco's is a pizza place i work at um all the time he comes in i was like holy fuck you look like that guy <laughs> like, <laughs> like you look can i just take your picture like so much like that guy you know if i can think about it remind me to check see if that guy has facebook i'll show you his face and the character's face it's fucking brutal i, I do agree with you for the ending though but i i do like how max leaves it's Makes more sense for his character, yeah. and it's just it's 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 his character. Yeah, he's not. Is he? If he's been like that for the past movies, he's gonna be like that for this movie. Yeah, it's just it's how he is. Uh, he, he stays to help because he kind of knows in the movie, like near the end, where he thinks of leaving them. It's almost like the ghost of his past kind of guilt trip him to helping. Yeah, exactly. The fucking ghost of his past save his life too, and he gets an arrow shot at him, and he goes, brings his hand up to his head. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I guess I just thought of this. We should have mentioned this probably before, but spoilers. <laughs> a, a little too late. <laughs> spoilers about Mad Max. If, um, if you didn't realize it before, spoilers. Yeah, we're gonna... <laughs> I think we already spoiled all of Fury Road. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and Mad Max. I don't think we spoiled Road Warrior yet, so if you haven't seen Road Warrior... Check it out. <laughs> you know, you're, and we, you're haven't really, we haven't really spoiled Thunderdome either, if you want to see that one too. It sucked. <laughs> I said it sucked. But uh, the game, uh, fucking, I'm gonna spoil the game. <laughs> like the game had uh, all the the game. I think was more brutal than the movie. Oh, like cause some of the stuff you can do in the well, game. That and in the story, the story took turns that I was like, holy fuck, man. Oh, oh yeah, there was one moment in the story I saw because our friend in the Brentley showed me the ending. Yeah. So I was kind of like, what? No. Do you want me to just explain the story then, since you already know how it fucking ends? Oh, go right ahead. I Spoilers on the hits. Mad Max game if you haven't beat it. So basically, the story of Mad Max and the game is in the beginning, his interceptor, his classic car, is stolen from him. He gets smashed up. They take all his shit, take his car. Then you meet Chum Bucket. Chum Bucket's this like, hunchback fucking uh, mechanic. He's the best fucking sidekick in a video game in years. He re he repairs all your shit. He well, he's all he's so useful. He's actually a useful sidekick. Then his lines are awesome, and his the voice actor is awesome, and his movements and shit. Like uh, one you saw today. Every time a tornado comes, he's like, "It's the mighty dust ass." Like, <laughs> it's awesome. I love this fucking dialogue. Anyway, he knows you. You go up to him, and he's like, "I can build you." A, he says he'll build you a better car than the black on black. 
So that's the beginning of the game is about your final finally scraps to build this new car, the Magnum Opus. And to do that, you gotta make allies. You make allies with all these stronghold leaders, and one of them, he has a woman in a cage who he's selling. And that's the other thing about Mad Max, is Max sees these things, like this stronghold ally he has, he's selling a woman, selling a slave. Doesn't object to that. Everyone knows the world they live in. They're not trying to change the world. And I like that about the game. It's not like, oh, it's wrong to sell people. So fucking, yeah. no, he's like, all right, this is the world I live in. Doesn't even phase him. He kind of feels bad, like he looks at her and shit. And Anyway, he accidentally helps her out. Because he goes in, because she calls him in and fucking... Uh, he grabs a wrench or whatever. She's like, give me that wrench. And he goes to do it, and the guy walks by, and he's like, don't be talking to her. She's fucking trade or whatever. So he just drops the wrench. But he conveniently drops it far enough where she can reach and grab it to let some out. So you're doing all this shit. You're going from stronghold to stronghold. And by the way, in the beginning of the game, you kill Scrotus, the, the main villain. Supposedly, you stick a chainsaw through his head, and the whole land thinks he's dead. So you're doing all this shit, and you stumble onto this woman again. And she thanks you and thanks you, and you meet her daughter, and then you get to know her. So think about that. Conveniently, Max meets a woman and a little girl. Very convenient. Yep, and he gets all kinds of flashbacks and shit. He wants, he's trying to avoid them because he doesn't like to get close to people and shit, but he starts helping them. And, um, you get kind of close with them and shit. And you find out Scrotus is alive in a really epic way. You do this gas town race against one of the main, like, big main enemies, whose name is, um, Scum Bucket? Scum? Stankum? Stankum. Stankum? Stankgum. Stank. So you do a race against him, the Gaston race, which I fucked up on so many times. My magnum opus was not prepared. <laughs> it was not... Mm, it was so enough. intense, though. It was, like, just a big track, and you have to destroy Stankgum's car. And but there's all these other cars attacking you, like the audience is throwing thunder sticks at you. In the the middle. audience is throwing thunder yeah, sticks? Yeah, I think. Like, they're coming from the side, so it's like, <laughs> that must be the audience. Those dicks. But you just, I died a lot. But I eventually destroy him, and then you get a reward. But first, they have a little Thunderdome reference. So the whole thing with the Thunderdome is it's like a gladiator arena. And they have this chant, they're like, two men go in, one man comes out. So you and your partner go in, who's not Chum Bucket, basically this chick you have to recruit to be in the back of your car, then you have to kill it. So that was kind of cool, too. They do, they don't pull any strings. They're all like, no, I can't kill her. She's my ally. And Max is just like, all right, let's fuck shit up. <laughs> like, let's fucking do so it. you kill this bitch, then you go to get your reward, and this guy, the ladies guy, is giving this huge speech, epic speech, and he's like, here to present the award to uh, this, the road warrior, blah, blah, blah. And then in between all that, you see these really cool shots, like a low shot of boots walking in slow motion, and then one of, like, arms. And then he wears this, like, steel spike, like, strap-on spike for, like, a dick. Strap-on spike. Yeah, it's basically like a strap-on dildo, but it's, like, a knife instead. Nice. And you see, like, the back of his head, and then, like, a close-up of that thing he has in his nose, or respirator thing. And you're like, oh, fuck, this dude's still alive. And he's coming to present an award to you, the guy who put a chainsaw through his head. And you can hear him coming, and the guy's like, the mighty Scrotus! And Max's face, an animated face, you can just feel the terror. He's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to go. The guy comes in, and he goes to give the award, and he's like, it's you! And fucking starts beating the shit out of you. <laughs> you got this boss fight that goes all through Gastown, because he's he kicking your ass, you run away, you fight a million war boys, and you gotta escape Gastown. That was a wicked mission. So after that, this Scrotus guy is basically, like, scavenging the wasteland for you. He wants you dead. So, it gets really intense from there. But eventually what happens is this woman and a child you become close with. First, actually, first of all, it's Chum Bucket runs off with your car. It's all that Because you say you're going to destroy it or something. Yeah. You're going to destroy it somehow to... I can't remember what he does, but for some reason he was going to destroy it or leave it or leave Chum... No, he's going to leave Chum Bucket, that's right. After he was done with everything, he was going to leave Chum Bucket. And Chum Bucket's like, you can't... I, I, I have to be my, my angel. I can't leave my car. <laughs> and so you leave one point, or you go down somewhere and, uh, where buzzards are, and he gets scared and he takes off and leaves you there without your car. Oh. Yeah. 
and uh, you go back to where you should be, and the motherfucker left with your car. So you start kicking the shit out of the stronghold leader, and you're like, where did he go? And he's like, somewhere about a... It's birth. The car is birth. And obviously you know where that is. So you drive across the map, and you get to him, and you find him all bloodied up and shit. And uh, you're like, you left me and shit, and it was a setup. Stank comes there, fucking beat the piss out of Chum Bucket. It's all bloody, and then you have a quick boss fight with Stank Gum, kill him. You run his ass over, too, and fucking violent. But Stank Gum tells you before you kill him, he's like, doesn't matter if you kill me anyway, you can't stop what's already started. He's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, when your little Chum Bucket fucking gave his speech about the woman and child, Scrotus was here. Oh. So Max is like, Fuck, he gets in the magnum opus, runs this dude over, and he flies to her place. And I'm guessing she's dead. So here's what I thought. I'm like, all right, they're going to do the um, cliche thing. Not the cliche thing, but the expected thing is you walk in, and you're either going to save the day, and that's the end. It's a big fight to save her. No, they pull no fucking punches, dude. You walk in, little girl strung up. Or no, little girl's still alive. Uh, she dies in her arms with the... The mom strung up, with like, crucified, bloody as fuck. Oh. The whole place is destroyed. No punches pulled. Little girl's bloody as shit, and she dies in your arms. And Max is, is now mad. <laughs> He's now mad. He's now Max. mad, Max. And you go after Scrotus. You tear up the wasteland. You're like, where's his fucking convoy? And you find it, and you have this epic, epic convoy fight in the end. So... The way the game actually ends, where again, I can't believe they did this, pulled no punches. Fucking, the convoy's hanging off the edge, and you gotta get it off, right? Because Scrotus is trying to climb out. Here's what you do to get it off. I could not believe you did this. You were gonna ram the magnum opus into it. Alright, sounds easy enough. But to fully get it off, you gotta ram the opus off the edge. So Chumbuck is like, no! No, you can't destroy the Opus. No, no, no. And you just start taking off, and he climbs onto the front, and it goes first person. He's on your windshield, like banging on your windshield. He's like, no, Saint, stop. Stop. You floor it. You bail. You send Chum Bucket into it. Boom, blows up. You kill Chum Bucket. Blew my mind. I'm like, no game has you ever kill your ally. Whoa, especially <laughs> such an innocent ally. Like, Chum Bucket does nothing to anybody. He's just like a cripple, and you fucking blew him up. Well, I suppose maybe from Max's point of view... But that's what... That's what I, I like this Mad Max, is he's more brutal. Mel Gibson's Mad Max would never have done that. Yeah. This Max is like, fuck it, screw it, this has to die. Boom! Blew him up. You could also like think that, like, Chum Bucket... That mother and daughter are dead because of Chum Bucket. Technically, yeah, but... That could have. He's. It's just good. you kind of feel bad for him though, because he's like a child. Oh yeah. He's, well, that's the thing. Like I, I, I feel like maybe from Max's point of view, that also solidified his yeah, decision. Yeah. But <laughs> I felt so. I'm like, no way. He just killed Jump Bucket. There's no <laughs> way that he's not dead. He's gonna like climb up. So I was also thinking, like, what about the Magnum Opus? I got so many side missions to do. <laughs> like, what the fuck? No way. But then the cool thing is, right when you thought he was dead, right, is it falling off the cliff? They turn your interceptor into a war machine. They burst out the back, and Scrotus tries to run you over. But luckily for you, there's thunder sticks everywhere. Boom! Blow him up. And then he gets a really bloody death. But anyway, beating the game, you get your interceptor back. And Chum Bucket. No, no Chum Bucket. He's dead. Oh, I thought you got Chum Bucket back. It, well, what the game does, is, so the end of the story is you get your interceptor back, and then you see Max driving his interceptor down a road. Yeah. And it kind of does like this cool like Fury Road zoom onto his face. And then it ends. But then it kind of resets oh, okay. a little bit. And it's like, all right, because there's so much other shit to do, here's your Magnum Opus back and here's Chum Bucket. And now you can just fuck around the wasteland. The cool thing is at the end of the game, you get three rewards. You get Max's original jacket, which is awesome. I'm, I have my Max sporting that right now. And then you get the Interceptor, his original car, Nice, nice. Which, really fast, really sick. Don't use it, though. <laughs> because the only car that Chum Bucket can go in the back of is the Magnum Opus. Oh. So if he's not in the back, the only weapon you have is the sawed-off or to ram into people. 
Game which gets me to the next reward. That kind of blows. <laughs> and the other reward is you get the original sawed-off shotgun from World Warrior. Nice, nice. So you got all kinds of, like, the game's like, good job, you beat the game. But here are some prizes to keep you playing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Don't quit us yet. Yeah, you can have all this shit. Keep playing. So I did, man. I fucking put another 30-something hours in. Holy shit. I fucking love that game. Fantastic game. Now they just need some Fury Road DLC. <laughs> yeah. Make it, make it like the movie. Give us some huge chases like that. And what I told you is, uh, if you like Shadow of Mordor, you will like this game. As long as you like Mad Max. If yeah. you like Fury Road and you like Shadow of Mordor, you'll like the Mad Max game. Yeah, Warner Brothers games like that are pretty similar. Yeah, even um, Batman. The Batman games are Warner Brothers, too. Yeah. So, yeah, like, you're in for a fucking splendid time. If you like any of those games, you will definitely dig Mad Max. And you know, just check out Mad Max. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you should... I'll actually, speaking of that, I think I'm going to post a review of Mad Max, too. Right. Sometime this week. Um, hey. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add, sir? No, I think that's it. Um, we've, had a, we've had a pretty good talk about this. Yeah. Oh, there's our hourly bell. <laughs> yeah. We know how long we've been. Well, yeah. <laughs> Perfect timing. Um, all right, guys, let's give you a quick update of what else is coming to the channel. I finally am getting my laptop today so I can upload constant and good videos for you guys. Thanks to this fucker right here. He's going to Kingston with me. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I get my new laptop so I can start uploading more. I'm going to shoot more. I'm going to try to get a few videos out this week. I'm planning on doing a review of the Mad Max game. Um, I'm going to see, hopefully I'm seeing Black Mass today. I think I am. Might see Straight Outta Compton too. I've already seen that. This fucker hasn't. So I need to see it. But then the, the ironic thing is he's seen Black Mass and I haven't. So this guy needs to see it. <laughs> so we'll see, but I'll probably try to get a Black Mass review up. Might do a vlog. I don't know. But uh, yeah, guys, if you like uh, if you like this podcast, hopefully we'll start doing more podcasts. Uh, I want to do at least a weekly podcast, if not a couple a week. Then, you know, we'll do, hopefully we can do that, get some new ideas out, can we you know, like, I'm sure most of you who watch this are Star Wars fans. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier. So when the new Star Wars movie comes out, you can bet we're going to try and make something. Yeah, about we'll definitely do a Force Awakens podcast and a Battlefront podcast. That, that too, that too. Yeah, we, we're going to try to mainly most of our podcasts will be movie-based, I think, video game-based. Yeah. Mostly movies, but we will find time for video games because um, video games are wicked. Yeah, like the big ones like that, like... I don't think we'll do a Rainbow Six podcast. Like, no. But like Star Wars, we'll do a Star Wars podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there might be, if you guys have other things you want to hear podcasts about, our basic film knowledge, is, well, our basic knowledge is films and games, but I don't know, maybe we'll do a more heartfelt podcast one day about knowledge <laughs> and life. And, I mean, hell, we could talk about vampires and how shitty they are now. Now, yeah, like... But everything's pretty much gonna be movie themed. We might not do a specific movie like we did today. It might be just like, uh, like I know Kevin Smith does Fat Man on Batman. Batman. That's the name of his podcast, right? Yeah. He has like fifty podcasts about different Batman topics. Like some of them are the movies. Some of them are like Christian Bale as Batman. That's some, true. We like, could we could go with something and just do multiple talkings about. Yeah, we could do subtopics like. Like we we can do that ourselves. Talk about Batman and the different Batmans. Yeah. What do we think about the games, the Arkham Knight games? Yeah, do subtopics, larger topics. Like today was a very broad topic, which is Mad Max. Yeah. Anything Mad Max. Um, yeah. So you guys like this? So you should like, subscribe. Um, we're gonna try to uh, Kevin Smith. I saw an evening with Kevin Smith in Windsor Comic Con, and he said, "If you want to start podcasting, put out at least a hundred episodes, <laughs> and I bet you'll be successful." Or he'll give me $100. Which is a nice incentive. So we'll try to put out at least 100 podcasts before we give up. But I don't, I'm not the type of person to give up. And this is just fun, is it not? Yeah, it's a good, good talk. It's good. Yeah, good I, I convinced this fucker here to podcast with me. We were a little drunk the other night. And I asked him, you want to podcast with me? And he's like, eh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, then we start talking about movies. We spent three hours talking about movies. Like, I think we, oh. we spent a lot of the time talking about Ben Affleck. Yeah. We I should re have that conversation on the <laughs> yeah. podcast. If only we recorded it at that time. I know, and I told him after, I'm like, dude, that was podcasting. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, that. It was just a conversation we had. 
if we had the microphone on and we uploaded that, there's a podcast. And he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, fuck, let's do it. <laughs> so he came here today and he podcasted with me. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot for everybody to hear. Oh, God. Are you going to be my permanent podcast partner? Uh, probably not permanent, but when my time allows, when time's good, I'll try, try to do as many podcasts with you as possible. There you have it. We're going to have Ryan here on as much as we can. Basically, let's do this. Almost every time we hang out, if we have time, we'll try to throw a podcast in. All right. Because we basically spend all our time talking anyway. That's true. Let's just, let's just turn the fucking <laughs> the iPhone on. Hey, actually, every Thursday we go to the bar. We come back here and talk. Yeah, I was actually going to say that. We could do a podcast every Thursday then. Yeah, spend a couple hours at the bar, come we back come here. We get a little buzz on, talk. Yeah, let's I do that. Know. Every Thursday, you want to do a podcast? That sounds good to me. There you go. Every Thursday night, we're going to record a podcast, and I'll upload it every Friday. This one's a little early, and then I might do other ones, maybe not with Ryan. I hate somebody, though. I can't talk to my girlfriend. I love her, but she doesn't know fuck all about movies. Yeah. She's, she's an awesome person, but she's not a movie person like us. Yeah, she would be like, babe, what do you think of Christian Bale's Batman? Who the fuck is Christian Bale? <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, she puts up with my nerd stuff, but she doesn't fucking know anything about it, so... Well, you know what? I'm sure, as he can say, she makes up for it in other ways. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that in a different podcast, all right? <laughs> Leave that out of this one. Um, I don't know. We'll try to think of a topic for Thursday. We could probably think of a few on our own. If you guys oh. want to drop a comment, though. Yeah. It's always good to hear comments from you guys, like, you know, because you're our viewers, so we want to yeah. know what you want us all to talk about. All six of you. <laughs> all six of you. We You'll grow. Know. We want to know what you say. Hey, man, one thing that uh, it's going to take to get a good YouTube channel that I think a lot of people don't realize, because I had someone else who's going to do this YouTube stuff with me, and after, like, two videos, we only had, like, two subscribers, and he was like, well, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> well, you know, it's YouTube. you got to do a lot. you got to keep uploading for years. Like, a lot of the biggest YouTubers said they've been uploading for eight years before they became millionaires, and it's like, you know what I mean? I'm not looking to be a millionaire. I just, this is the kind of shit I enjoy doing. Yeah. So, fuck, if I get popular and YouTube throws me a hundred bucks a month, that's yeah. something. It's a nice bonus. It's I just like having an audience, so fucking subscribe and shit, guys. And hit the like button and tell your friends. Dark Alley Podcasts, or I guess our YouTube channel is Dark Alley Productions. And, you know, it's not the only thing we're doing. Like he said, he's going to be doing reviews, and we do also make movies. Lo yeah. Locally I made. I didn't mention that. That's just one of the many things that Dark Alley is, is into doing. Yeah, we uh, we do make feature films, very indie, low budget, like kind of work with what you got kind of films. Yeah, um, <laughs> we don't have, we're not making any at the moment, but you know, hopefully that'll change. I'm writing stuff. That's why I'm getting my laptop so I can start writing shit. Hey, he's definitely writing stuff. As for pro actual production, hopefully nothing started. Hopefully, sometime in the future. <clears throat> yeah, but I didn't mention that. That's another thing. We're gonna be uploading trailers, maybe some clips, uh, short film. Oh. Short films, that's another Speaking one. of Mad Max, oh, why didn't we think it is? Our Mad Max short film. Yeah, right? we're doing a Mad Max short film. Uh, sometime in the next month or two, like, we're, I'm trying to get everything settled. I got us a truck, got us a car. I'm trying to find paint or some kind of color I could put on the car that could wash off without damaging it. Hey, if you guys know, comment so we can fucking make it. And then, yeah, we just got to get a couple more actors. I got to write the script, and we're going to shoot a little, like, five, ten minute... Mad Max short film. It's not going to be Mad Max, but it's going to take place in that universe. And yeah, so hopefully we get that to you guys pretty soon. But yeah, I think that about wraps up this podcast. So, uh, Ryan, thank you for podcasting with me. It's good to be in the podcast. Yes, it is. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, and you'll hear from us again by Friday. See y'all. <laughs>